Well, good morning and welcome into this virtual contemporary worship service here at First United Methodist of Oak Ridge. My name is Chris Black and I'm one of the pastors here. I'm so glad that you tuned in today uh, to worship with us in this first Sunday of 2021. Uh, good riddance to 2020, I think. Many of us probably feel that way. Um, today, uh, we are going to be talking a little bit about uh, of a different kind of resolution that we can maybe make as Christians, as a, as a covenant to God. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, but now, we want to hear some words from Jenny Kaufman. Hello, my name is Jenny Kaufman, and I also am blessed to serve as one of the pastors here at First United Methodist Church. And I'm grateful that we could be together even if that is virtual. Before we start our worship, we want to offer heartfelt congratulations and true blessings to Seth O'Kegley and Jared Gibson, who were united in marriage yesterday. So we are happy for them and just wish them much joy and happiness in their lives together. So now let us prepare for worship by turning to God in prayer. O oh God, searcher of all our hearts, you have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace and to enter anew into covenant with you, reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our inmost being and receive us in mercy for the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Christ is my reward and all of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy My soul will sing, no turning back, I've been set free, Christ is enough for me, Christ is enough for me, everything I need is in you.
Well, for our Centering Worship moment today, I want to have us offer up a confession, a confession of sin. This, for a Wesleyan Covenant service, is a really key portion of of this worship service. You'll hear more about that uh, during the sermon. But for now, I want to invite you to offer up a confessional prayer with me. Uh, This confessional prayer comes out of... uh, the Wesleyan Covenant Service, which was kind of compiled and written by John Wesley, our founder himself. Confession of sin is an important step to take as we prepare to make our own vow to follow Christ with all of who we are and to recommit to Christ for the year 2021. There will be an extended period of silence after I finish the prayer for you to offer up your own confessions to God. Let us pray together. Righteous and loving God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive our unfaithfulness. We have turned our love toward the world. We have allowed temptations to lead us away from you. We renounce all our idols, those abilities, possessions, and gifts we place ahead of you. We desire to be in covenant with you. We confess you as Lord. And we'll seek to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Now, as a response, let us offer the prayer that Jesus Himself taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words from 1 Peter chapter 1. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, discipline yourselves, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct, for it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you may have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. And God always blesses the reading of God's holy word. Well, I'm sure it was a welcome thing to be able to allow 2020 uh, to go into the rearview mirror and to welcome in a new year uh, this past week. Uh, Many of you probably celebrated the new year in your own way. Many of us probably celebrated with joy as we um, allowed 2020 to kind of go away. Um, It was a tough year, I think, for all of us, what with the pandemic and all the fallout from it and the volatile political environment that we've all sort of endured this year. It's nice to be able to welcome in uh, a new year with its own new hopes and and new opportunities. 
I know that many of us, as we enter into New Year every year, we try to make resolutions uh, for the new year, new commitments uh, to do things differently uh, and embrace this, this new beginning that comes with a new year. A resolution, by definition, is a decision, a firm decision, to do something or to not do something. I'm sure that many of you have resolutions maybe to, to try to get healthier or to lose a little weight or to um, maybe visit with family a little bit. Well, today... Uh, we, as your pastors, wanted to give you an opportunity to make a resolution of sorts. We actually want to invite you to make a covenant. A covenant is a little, is a little different than a resolution. A covenant is uh, basically an agreement. And this morning, we want to invite you to make an agreement with God. Um, and so we're going to do that a little bit later with a covenant prayer. But before we do that, we're going to reflect on a little bit of Scripture and a little bit of our own tradition as Methodist people. See, early on in the Methodist movement, John Wesley recognized that it was really important for his followers, who were kindred with hundreds of years later, it was really important for his followers to kind of check in on their faith often and to sort of check in and just reflect on what their faith life is like, what their relationship with God was like. So he created a worship service that is a covenant service where he encouraged his followers to reflect on sin in their life or things that may be keeping them from a deeper relationship with God and to recommit to being disciples. And the tradition, as it kind of grew over hundreds of years, uh, came to rest in this time of year right after uh, a new year, that first Sunday of a new year. And so, we are going to be a part of that tradition today, this morning. Mark and Jenny and I wanted to bring to you a little bit of Scripture to reflect upon that Jeff read earlier. This morning, I want to invite you to open up your own Bible to that passage from 1 Peter uh, 13 and mark it. And maybe go back to that passage in a few months and reread it and think about this morning and this moment. But as, if you've got that passage open, I want you to invite you to, to check it out. Peter is writing to a Christian audience, and he is characterizing them as, as exiled or in exile. And many of us may feel like that as Christians as we seek to live out the, the love of God and, and to live into Christ's teachings. Yet the world around us, the culture and um, the, our society and our political landscape um, is anything but what Christ envisioned uh, in, in many ways for his teaching. So it can feel like we are in an exiled place. Um, and Peter's audience, I think, was feeling that way too. So he wanted to encourage them. And he, he says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves, he said. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when He is revealed. He's encouraging them into a future. And encouraging them to be holy, as God is holy. But the, the last verse, last couple of verses, really, really stuck out to me this week as I was preparing uh, this sermon. In verse 22, it says, Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love. Genuine mutual love. Love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring Word of God. Now we know as Christians that that Word of God is Jesus Christ Himself, whose birth we just celebrated during Christmas. That genuine mutual love Loving one another deeply. That is a hallmark of, of a future, of a hope, of, of how folks should be as Christians in exile. That has stuck with me. And I started to think about that love and how it relates to our own discipleship. How does, does that love that Peter envisions for those exiled Christians, how does it fit with how we follow Jesus Christ and, and seek to live out that following? Well, my mind automatically went to the last part, the last chapter of the book of Matthew. Matthew 28, to Jesus' great commission. 
right before Jesus ascended, he said to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, or, or everything that I have taught. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. That last verse, I think, is incredibly comforting uh, for us who, as we continue to, to be isolated from one another, as we continue to, to not be able to have church as we would like, to remember that Jesus is with us always, no matter what, to the end of time. But it's those simple commandments just above that beautiful statement that has stuck with me and that I was reminded of as I read through 1 Peter that moment where Jesus says, He invites His followers to make disciples. To baptize in the name of the Trinity. And to teach others what Christ has taught. It's a really simple commission. But can have, prof- and a, prof- can have a profound influence on the landscape of eternity. And also, if we follow it, a profound influence on, on our own community and the people around us thought about the commission and, and thought about our own discipleship and how that discipleship and that love that Peter referenced, how that can, the, the relationship um, between those. Now some of you may be thinking this morning when well, you're, you're listening and you're hearing and you're, you're waiting for our, our covenant time and you're thinking to yourself, well Chris, I, I have been trying to grow in, in my own discipleship. I'm listening, I'm doing what you're telling us. You may be thinking, well, yeah, I, I have been praying as often as I can. I do study Scripture. And I have been trying to be in community by, by worshiping online. And, and I have been reaching out in service to others. And what else should I do to grow as a disciple this year? What kind of covenant could I make? Well, growing up in a Christian family and in a Christian church, um, the memories that I have, of that really weren't about how often I prayed or how much Bible I read or how often I was in church. What stuck with me as a young person and stuck with me now is actually um, who taught me about the faith. Those moments when I was able to watch someone on a mission trip wire out a socket or put up drywall or who taught me how to paint, or who, who taught me um, how to interpret Scripture, because they've been a, at this Christian thing for 30 or 40 years, that I remember being discipled. And I also remember those moments when I had the opportunity and the privilege to disciple other people, to teach someone who's younger than me how to wire a socket on a mission trip, or to teach them about um, Scripture as I understand it and, and who Jesus Christ is that vulnerability of talking about what prayer means to me, to somebody else. It's really important for us as Christians to intentionally live into the tension of being discipled and discipling others. That's how we grow in the faith. And that's how we grow in that mutual love that Peter is referencing. So, as we enter into this time, this new year, I want to encourage you to consider how you could disciple someone else and help them to grow, whether it be mentoring one of our youth or our young adults, or reaching out to someone who's new in the faith and encouraging them. And I want you to think about how you could be discipled yourself, how you could learn from someone who may be older than you, who is an authority in your own life, or maybe someone who has gone on to be with God, who's left behind writings and or videos or something like that. What could you be taught about someone else's discipleship? Well, these are just some thoughts for us today. And now, I want to invite you um, to offer up a prayer with me uh, and with a few other folks. Um, I'm going to offer up an invitation which is written by Wesley himself, um, and then we're going to offer a covenant prayer together. I want to invite you to pray 
this with intention. Even getting on your knees right where you're at in your own home. And pray this prayer with us. As we look to a future of discipleship here at First United Methodist of Oak Ridge. Hear these words. Commit yourselves to Christ as His servants. Give yourselves to Him that you may belong to Him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. But then there are other works where we cannot, ple- where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us, therefore, go to Christ in prayer together. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Place me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you or set set aside aside for you, praised praised for you, you, or or criticized for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, You are mine, and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen.
Well, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this worship service, for this Wesleyan Covenant service, and for this first Sunday of 2021. Uh, Before we offer up a benediction, I have a couple of announcements uh, for us. Uh, We are, even though it's a new year, we are the same church. And that means there are plenty of opportunities here um, to serve others in our community. Uh, I want to invite you to check out our website at fumcor.org for for some of those announcements and other devotional opportunities, as well as as our worship services uh, and past worship services, too. I want to invite you to check out our YouTube page and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. We have a lot of great content uh, from this week, but then also from weeks past. So that is great if you, if you wouldn't mind to do that. Uh, lastly, be on the lookout for our First Things newsletter. You can always see uh, the most up-to-date things about, about our church and about what we're doing and, and what we're involved in there. Now, I invite you to, to offer up a benediction with me. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever He may send you. May He guide you through the wilderness and protect you through this storm. May He bring you home rejoicing at the wonders He has shown you. May He bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen.